Hey, this is Julius from Analytics Mania, and I will be speaking at Measure Summit 2021 about my learnings and hard lessons about Google Analytics 4. So, see you there! Now, here are some of the missing features that might be deal breakers for you. These are not the, this is not the full list, but these might be some uh, of the things that might be very important to you. So, annotations, there are no some, such, there, there, there are no annotations in GA4. Then there is no search console integration, optimized integration, custom channel groupings, then comprehensive filters, because in GA4, you can only filter out uh, traffic based on your IP address but you cannot do any other magic that was available in GA3. Then you cannot easily exclude query parameters from the, let's say from page URL, because that was simple in GA3 and in GA4 you would, right now you would need to do some magic in Google Tag Manager. Then there are no calculated metrics, no views, no conversion rate as a metric. You cannot uh, drill down in reports. You don't have product scoped custom dimensions. So if any of these are major are a major deal breaker for you, then you might not want you, you, sh you should not migrate right now fully to GA4 only. But again, my position here is that I would run Universal Analytics and GA4. That was a recommendation from the, one year ago, and it still is. But it looks like uh, things are getting. I mean, even though it might look quite bad on the situ on looking at GA4, but I would say that things are getting better because you know. One year ago, I was probably using uh, Google Universal Analytics in 99% per of situations, but right now I'm using it probably in 60%, while the other 40 are uh, are you know are supported by Google Analytics 4. So things are getting better, and I think that definitely next year it might be the year when you can uh, you know safely migrate uh, to GA4 uh, without you know losing some functionality or at least losing major func functionality. So on that more positive note. Let's take a look at other bright things and other brights on, on the, at the bright side of Google Analytics 4 because not everything is bad. Like actually, there are some solid improvements that might be interesting for you to try out. So there are higher data collection limits if we take if we compare GA3 and GA4. So in Universal Analytics, you had a 10 million hits per month uh, limit per property, and in GA4 that is unlimited. Then, uh, when it comes to sampling in Universal Analytics, you the sampling the sampling kicked in when you were working with over five hundred thousand sessions. Now in GA4, uh, standard reports are unsampled, but since those reports at the moment kind of suck, I don't care about that. But uh, when I'm working with explorations, uh, the sampling will kick in uh, in like when you hit the limit of uh, 10 million events in that single exp exploration. Uh, now, um, like if you're tracking a lot of events, what, ha what might happen is that this 10 million events uh, uh, threshold might actually uh, hit even sooner than you have, you know, 500,000 sessions right here. But in most cases, I would say that this limit uh, for most businesses, at least, you know, smaller and medium businesses uh, will be higher. And I'm talking about that 10 million um, threshold right here. Then in Universal Analytics, we had uh, 20 custom dimensions and 20 custom metrics. By the way, right now I'm talking about the free version of Universal Analytics because uh, in a premium version, uh, the limits uh, are higher. And in GA4, you have 50 custom dimensions, 50 custom metrics, and 25 user scoped custom dimensions. So the limits are higher right here. Then it's worth mentioning enhanced measurement, even though I'm not a fan of all things here. I mean, outbound clicks and file downloads are okay. Site search is okay. Okay, but for example, scroll tracking and video engagement, I usually implement them with Google Tag Manager because uh, video engagement doesn't work on all websites and scroll tracking, uh, if I ever decide to track scrolls at all, even though like I, I'm not, I don't, um, I don't often uh, use them, but if I do, then uh, I would like to see more uh, thresholds uh, being tracked and I will uh, soon explain what I mean. Um, so anyway, enhanced measurement for those who don't, who, who just want to install uh, basic G for tracking code and they want to go, no, j just have some basic data is best, is definitely a better thing than having, uh, you know, just page views in Universal Analytics. Then we have modify events feature. So if for some reason you have a, 
some weird event like this because I don't know some there was a there was some bug in the code and some hard coded snippet is sending this weird event with some grammatical errors. So you can create uh, additional conditions in in Google Analytics for interface, and then you can tell GA4 that hey, if this event comes in, rename it and change this name to, let's say, file download, which is properly formatted. Then you can even create events directly in the interface of GE4 without the need of things like, you know, Google Tag Manager or gtag.js. So for example, let's say that, uh, I, that people on my websites, they can uh, book a consultation. So let's say that I, like in this case, what I could do is that I can create an event and I can name it booking, dot, uh, booking underscore completed. And this event will be based on other events and other incoming data. So if the page view, or actually if the event name uh, is page view and not just any page view, but page view where page location contains slash booking complete, then Google Analytics 4 can be configured to uh, dispatch automatically this event and make it available in your reports. So the next time you want to see how many people have visited that particular, you know, thank you page, you just can go to the gen generic uh, event uh, list and see how many times was this booking completed event fired. Uh, then another thing that I really like is audience triggers. So for example, uh, you can create an audience. Let's say here I have an audience where people have, uh, like where, where users have seen any promotion and then made a purchase within the same session. So in that case, if this, is, if, if this condition is met, I can configure that audience to trigger an event. And this is the name of the event that I came up with. This is my naming convention. So I always start audience uh, trigger events uh, with AU, which is audience. And then I can name that event, for example, purchase after view promotion. So if you ever in the future want to, uh, to check quickly how many people have made a purchase after seeing a promotion in the same session, you can just go to your event list and see that number of event counts right, here, right there. Uh, then uh, we have another thing which is more related to the, that machine learning AI uh, part that was uh, often mentioned in GA4, even though we had no idea, like, so like we had no idea when GA4 was promoted, we had no idea where that machine learning will be used. So one of the things, one of the areas where it is used is uh, audiences. However, this is not for everyone because you need to have some solid volume of data, so solid volume of uh, purchases being tracked with Google Analytics and then machine learning uh, algorithms will try to build an audience of people who, for, who uh, will, for, for example, uh, likely uh, buy within the next seven days. And you can later show ads to this particular audience right here. Then, as I've already mentioned, I really like uh, explorations. Uh, I really like debug view. Uh, some of you might like also uh, BigQuery integration. Another thing that is really cool to me is data deletion requests. And uh, here's an example. So uh, let's say that you have been, uh, you know, tracking your website for the last uh, six months. And because of some technical bug or I don't know, something, uh, you were also collecting in page URLs, um, you were tracking personally identifiable information. Let's say, um, I don't know, email address, for example. And when you notice that you contacted your developer, you fixed that issue. But now what should you do? What can you do about that data that you have been already collecting for the last six months? Because collecting personally identifiable information is against, um, it's against Google's terms of service. So what you can do is, right now is that you can request a data, dele uh, data deletion and you can do that on a fairly granular level. So for example, here you could delete not the entire event, but you can delete only selected parameter on a selected event right here. So for example, you know, if you had some, you know, some parameter that is, uh, that contains personally identifiable information and you want to remove that, you can do that with a data deletion request. Hey, this is Julius from Analytics Mania and I will be speaking at Measure Summit 2021 about my learnings and hard lessons about Google Analytics 4. So see you there.